Welcome to another edition of the Fantasy Basketball Weekly. I'm Amber Wilson, and joining me, of course, is senior fantasy writer Jamie Eisenberg. And Jamie, let's start with injuries. Yeah, and unfortunately. this week, <laughs> there are more to talk about than normal. So we're going to break this down by position. We're going to start with centers first. Pal Gasol's dealing with his back. Yao Ming has an upper respiratory infection. Chris Kamen, he's now dealing with a shin injury. All these guys day to day, but there's a name on this list that's been out, Shaq. He's been dealing with a hip injury for a while. What is his status? Well, Amber, his status is good for fantasy owners, maybe even good for the Miami Heat, because it seems like Shaq is going to try to play again this season. You know, there were some rumors that he may sit out the rest of the year, try and focus on coming back for one more season next year, but he said he's going to come back when he's 70%. When he first missed some time with the hip injury, he missed about two weeks. Uh, to try and get some treatment. It seems like he's going to take maybe another two weeks, uh, which including the previous week. So maybe one more week without Shaquille O'Neal, but it's a good sign that he's going to come back because, as we know, Shaq, toward the end of the year is when he starts to gear himself up for these runs. And hopefully this is a good sign for fantasy owners that he can get back on the court because when he's playing, he's still a good number two fantasy option. And the Heat sure do need it, as well as the <laughs> fantasy owners that have Shaq sure. in their lineups. All right. More injuries. Let's go on to the forward position and lots of big names on this list. Yeah, you got you got Kevin Garnett that missed a game with an abdominal strain. Uh, uh, Grant Hill missed a game with a back injury. Lou Aldang still out with his Achilles tendonitis uh, situation. Carmelo Anthony missed two games now with an ankle injury as well. And we have Jermaine O'Neal still sitting out. The thing with Carmelo is he's going to try and play on Monday, so that's a good sign for him. KG and Grant Hill, both guys only have two games this week, so you may want to sit those guys in your, in your, if you can still set your lineup, just because you want to be on the safe side if they're going to miss some time, especially both these guys are gearing up for the playoffs. And then when it comes to Luol Deng, Amber, it seems like he's going to be out for a little bit longer, so maybe another week, another two weeks maybe, so Andres Nocioni is still going to have some value. Thabo Cephalosha is a guy that's playing well, especially with Ben Gordon, as we'll get to, out with a wrist injury. So some bulls you could pick up on your fantasy lineup, but keep Luol Deng reserved for now. Okay, and let's look at our guard injuries, where the list starts with Raymond Felton, who we actually had as a starting yeah. guard before <laughs> well, the weekend, up. right? <laughs> well, and then we get hurt. Well, there you go. It's, yeah. it's unpredictable. Fantasy, fantasy is always unpredictable. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And then Michael Red, he's the biggest name on this list. What's up with him? Well, Amber, you know, Michael Red has been dealing with some injuries uh, all season long. He missed a couple uh, games with a thigh bruise. His scoring is down a little bit, 27 points last year, around 23 points this year. So I still think you're going to start Michael Red, obviously, whenever he's in your in healthy and, and in the lineup. But as he's going now with his injury, the Bucks are still playing somewhat well without him. So if you're able to pick up guys now, Charlie Bell is going to have a little bit extra value if Red's going to be out. So keep an eye on Red's status. Hopefully he's back this week. The safer option, as we always are going to tell you, is to keep him reserved just because you don't want to have that injury situation sitting in your lineup all week long. So keep Michael Red reserved. Some, same with some of these other guards. Again, Ben Gordon missed some time with a wrist injury. We told you to play Raymond Felton, but... He's going to be out for maybe a couple games, so keep him reserved as well. So some guys you could pick up, and, and we'll get to those, I guess, pretty soon. Also. If only we could see the future. We could help <laughs> you guys out so much more. But it's not all bad news. We gave you a lot of bad news, but I'm going to give you a little piece of good news, hopefully. Is she the best? There's a lot of rumors <laughs> that Chris Webber is returning. How does his return affect Golden State? Well, it, it affects Golden State. It, it affects one guy in particular, and that's Andres Biedris, a guy that I know you like to pronounce his yes. name all the time. Uh, uh -huh. Andres Biedris coming off a tremendous game Sunday against the New York Knicks where he had 11 points, 26 rebounds. Uh, he's going to obviously lose some time once Weber joins the team. You know, it's not set in stone yet. He's still talking to the Pistons, the Lakers. Uh, but it seems like a deal is in place now where he's going to go back to Golden State where he uh, played previously with Don Nelson. So uh, he's going to give, you know, Nelson a little bit more versatility, give him a little bit of a post game now with, with Weber coming on there. But I don't think he'll affect most of the other guys on the team. However, he will affect Beadris. So hopefully Beadris continues to put up these big rebound games. You're still going to start him until Weber comes on board. But once Weber comes on, see how the minutes sort of shake out if Weber's going to take some time to get back into shape. But for now, it could affect Beadris down the road. All right, Jamie, tell me what's new with Elton Brand. You know, he started running again, Amber, so that's a very good sign for fantasy owners. He's been out all season long with his Achilles situation. So if he's going to get back on the court, still hasn't been cleared yet for basketball-related uh, activities, but getting closer, so hold on to him. If you can still pick him up, do so. More good news. That's right. Okay, the trade deadline is fast approaching, February 21st. What's mm -hmm. going on there? Well, it could, you know, this could have good news or bad news. You know, there are some uh, potential moves coming up. Jason Kidd now says he wants out of New Jersey after they've lost nine in a row, so keep an eye <laughs> on what happens there. There's still the potential of Mike Bibby and Ron Artest to be moved from Sacramento. You know, those, those rumors are going to start to heat up depending how the Kings do. If Kevin Martin could keep hitting some game winners, you know, they may not make any uh, moves anytime soon. But uh, those two guys are going to be big players on the trade market. Drew Gooden, one of those possible guys to go from Cleveland. It seems like Seattle is maybe shopping Wally Zerbiak. They're giving him a little extended time, a veteran guy there who could uh, have some potential trade value. And then there's going to be the consistent rumor of Paul Gasol and uh, Andres Nocioni in Chicago. But that could be determined, however, Luol Deng remains out. 
Another trade scenario that could happen is, uh, you know, Damon Stoudemire could be bought out of his contract in, in Memphis, and he could be going to Boston, he could be going to Phoenix, San Antonio, Toronto, those are all rumored deals, as well as Sam Cassell could also be on the move and for the Clippers if they decide to buy out his contract to let him go. So a lot of potential moves that could be really affecting your fantasy lineup in the coming weeks. All right, let's talk waiver wire for a minute. Who should fantasy owners be looking at? Well, again, you know, we've talked about some of these guys already, and you're looking at guys like Thabo Cephalosha, uh, Mark Blount, if, if Shaquille O'Neal is going to remain out, Mark Blount has been tremendous. Linus Kleza has played well without Carmelo Anthony. Even when Anthony has been in there, Kleza has played well. And then some other guys really not affected by injuries, but you're looking at Kareem Rush in Indiana. Uh, Maurice Evans in Orlando is playing well. Uh, Sebastian Telfair really holding on down the fort without Ray, uh, Ray excuse me, uh, Foy there, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave his first name out, and uh, Carlos Delfino playing well in Toronto, really getting the job done, you know, uh, taking some of those minutes that Jamario Moon had earlier in the season, and also, you know, really keeping Jason Capone on the bench. So, some guys that could still help your fantasy roster, and again, some good news with some of these More injuries. good news. <laughs> good stuff. All right, well, thanks, Jamie, My for pleasure. all of your advice. Keep your mouths right here at CBSSports.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. And if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Amber Wilson. Have a great week, guys.